Hey everyone. Hey John. Hello, how are you? Not too bad. So we are here today to talk about Microsoft Playwright testing service. John, do you want to tell the Playwright community a little bit about who you are? Sure, Debbie. Um, so I'm John Stallo. I'm a product manager. Um, I'm in the Azure DevTools team. Uh, we're a separate team uh, to uh, Playwright Open Source. Um, and uh, we work on various Azure services. And one of the services that I'm really excited to actually talk to you about um, is Microsoft Playwright Testing, uh, which just came out in public preview uh, early last month. OK, what exactly is this service? Yeah, so um, it really, the way that we think about Microsoft Playwright Testing Service is it extends the uh, you know Playwright, the core Playwright framework and and, and Dev Tools, um, with a cloud service really designed to help you scale running your Playwright tests. Okay, so now I've got like hundreds of tests, and I'm like waiting ages for that PR to you know the test to pass, and I'm going and having six coffees. That's what I want to use the service, right? To bring that time down. That's right. That's right. And and I think the the key thing that you just said right here was um, you know six coffees in a pool request. Well, <laughs> yes, that that too. Um, but but in a pull request, right? Like, look, if I if um, getting through your tests um, on a nightly build, you know, it takes a little bit longer. No one's really waiting for that. But we're really keen on helping with developer productivity, and that might be in a pull request and you're like it's iterative right like you get some uh something fails or you get some feedback that you need to update the code and recommit into the pull request and you do want to have that confidence right that you're actually going through your check before you know you get the the pull request through but so we want to minimize the amount of time that you're waiting around or even um before you're committing right like on your dev workstation and so if you do have uh, you know, many tests to get through, either because you have many tests or um, you're you're wanting to um, to to exercise those tests over different browser combinations. Um, that can really expand into you know waiting a long time. And so, meeting uh, you know, providing scale um, and performance um, is a key uh, scenario for the service. Yeah, and I've done this many times where I've got a bug and I go and fix that bug and then I just like push that code and like let the tests run on that pull request, but then there's something else missing and, and it fails and it's like 40 minutes later and I'm like, oh my God, I still can't finish work right. now. I've got to stay on longer, right? That's just horrible. <laughs> Indeed. So I'd love to show you how it works um, and yeah. just maybe run through a quick demo. Is that okay? Yeah, that would be cool. Okay, um, can you see my screen? I've got yep. VS Code open. All right, so um, so the first thing I want to show is, you know, I'm in a, a project here. I've got uh, quite a few uh, tests here, and you know, I can kick off, um, you know, a run here with uh, Playwright on the command line. Um, now, everything that I show here that I'm running, uh, you know, from the command line would work from my dev workstation like here, as well as in CI. Um, and that's that's really important that your skills just transfer. Um, uh, what you know about Playwright today is the way you would actually you know, run the service as well. So you can see I'm running through um, you know, some, some tests here. If I just scroll back up, okay, we've got quite a few tests that we're running because there's quite a, there's a few hundred here, but we're gonna be running through different browser uh, combinations. But the, the interesting thing here is um, already just built in, Playwright has parallelization, right? So it's figured out that I have enough cores to be able to run at least two workers, okay? So what that means is Playwright test runner spins up two workers, which are fairly lightweight processes uh, on my machine. And it also spins up for each worker, it spins up a browser instance. And so, now it's running my tests and um, you know, automating the browsers. And so you can see it like it's going through um, you know, the, the tests here. It's going through it fast and reliable, but I've got thousands of tests here, right? And like we were saying before, we're really trying to minimize the, the, the wait time, um, the feedback loop. So with this built-in 
uh, parallelization, well, what happens if I just increase the workers? So let me just control C out of this. I'm just gonna stop everything, clear my screen. And uh, let's do that again. And like today, right? Um, you can actually explicitly say how many workers you wanna run in parallel. So let's say we wanna pick like a really big number because you know, I'm in impatient and I just wanna get through these uh, tests as fast as I can. So let's pick a really large number like 40. Do you have 40 so workers in your team? Well, it will, it will try and spin up uh, okay. 40 workers, right? So you can see here it's spin up four, 40 after. processes. And uh oh, slowing down now. What we see is like it, it's come to a halt, right? Because remember, 40 workers spins up 40 instances or 40 browser instances. And you can see now it's starting to have some tests um, pass. But remember, before it was like sub seconds, and now it's like each test is now taking 17 uh, or, or more seconds. Some of them are failing. There's basically resource contention that's actually happening on my machine, right? And so obviously not good. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna control C out of that. And uh, let's close off um, that. Now I'll get into how this all happens a little bit later on, but let me just show you um, what it means to be able to now run with a service. So I'm going to run the exact same command, right? NPX playwright test, 40 workers. But this time I'm going to bring in another configuration file, which has just a little bit more, um, well, it has service specific configuration that builds on top of my existing playwright configuration. And we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But now if I run this, same thing again, it's going to spin up 40 lightweight processes workers oh, on my wow. machine. And now this time, fingers crossed. Look at that. And you can see it's like just speeding through this. Now, what's happening here is those 40 workers that are running on my machine are now connecting to 40 browsers that are in the cloud that the service provides. Wow. Um, you can see like it got through all of my Chromium uh, browser tests really quickly. And now it's gone through and now connecting to Firefox browsers that are uh, in the cloud um, and running through that really, really quickly. In, in no time, I'll be able to be uh, completed here with my thousand tests. Yeah, it's a massive difference. Very cool. So maybe one thing that uh, might be helpful is just showing a little bit um, I was trying to paint pictures with words, but maybe not doing that so clearly. I can actually show uh, an image of what's going on. I just want to see um, how long it takes. Look at that, look at that. 1.1 1. 1 minute, wow. Yes. Wow. No, it's pretty cool. Okay, so um, what I have here is um, a diagram that shows what I ran before. Okay, so, so this shows you what was happening when it was all running on my uh, local dev workstation. Um, and so it starts just starting from the left-hand side, whether this is running from your, um, your dev machine or inside a CI pipeline, you kick off um, your NPX playwright test. Let's say, you know, two workers, as I did originally, playwright test runner now kicks off two lightweight processes, two workers in parallel that each get their own browser instance. And then you saw that, you know, when I tried to increase that to, you know, 40, uh, workers where that required 40 browser instances and it's really the browser instances that really limits me um, in how I, much I can scale. Um, it's the browser instances that take up the lion's share of resources and, and the rule of thumb is you know it's around one CPU core you know per instance and usually on a dev workstation you have a few to spare depending on else, what else you've got running but on a CI uh, machine a CI agent um, very rarely you can get to, you know, uh, multi-core uh, machines. And so you really are limited in like your pull requests uh, type scenarios of just how much parallelization you can run with. Um, so the service then, when I move then to be able to run with the service, everything still remained, like all my environment, my tests, the workers, um, everything that I have access to, all still remains on you know, the, the, the local machine, the CI pipeline um, as well, but then they connect to browsers that are managed by Microsoft Playwright Testing. 
So the browser. And so that's what now it gives you. That's right. Yeah. And that, that's what gives you then the ability to just really scale because really what you're running in on the local machine is really lightweight processes. And then the beefy um, mm -hmm. you know, browser instances are running you know, off, off machine. And then it's kind of really interesting, right? Because it opens up new scenarios as well. So, you know, it doesn't matter then what I'm running here. Like I, I could be on a Windows machine, but I want to connect up to, uh, uh, you know, WebKit running in Linux, or I'm on the Windows machine and I want to run against, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, another operating a browser, another Fire operating system on, on, on the cloud. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. You can mm -hmm. you can do that. And one of the things that we're, we're, we're finding, this is kind of a side effect. It isn't really what we designed the, uh, the service um, to, to focus on, but one of the side effects is um, you start to end up, by connecting to browsers in the cloud, you end up with a very consistent um, uh, environment that your browsers are running. So you think about the times when you run your, your tests, you're taking screenshots. Well, who on your dev team, you know, what versions they're using of Windows or which browsers or it, those images end up being very, very different. Um, and so sometimes um, your know, teams will say, actually, no one runs visual regression tests other than, you know, the CI build, right? Yeah. Because that is, has some, some form of consistency. Well, in this case here, regardless of where you're running these tests from, it can actually give you that consistency even with things like screenshots because your browsers are the things that um, are, are really uh, doing that. That's very cool. So how does one get started? Is it easy to get started and use the service? Yeah, um, so so I, I kind of skipped over you know, a few details there. So let's go back here um, and uh, we just go a little bit rewind here. And you'll recall that when I ran that um, that command, I, I added this like playwright.service.config. Um, and uh, so let me just flip over. So the way that you would get started is um, open up your browser to playwright.microsoft.com. Uh, and uh, the way you sign in is you need an Azure account. Um, and once you have that, you can sign in with those credentials. And then the first time that you sign in, um, you'll get some, just a, a simple guide here um, of how to get your existing tests working with the service. And you can see that it's pretty much like adding to your project. You don't have to change any of your existing tests or anything to be able to get it to run with the service. So the first thing is, is there's some service configuration that needs to come on over into your project. And there's a link here to that. Um, and then there's a, an access token that you can generate um, and you can go and grab that um, uh, and that authenticates you with you know, your account. Um, there's a, another environment variable that you need to set that really has like the endpoint URL um, of the service and then that command that I ran before. And that's basically it. Um, so let me just show you a little bit more about what's inside that configuration file. So let me just switch over to VS Code again, and I've got it right here. Let me just move some things out of the way. Now, the, the, the first thing that you'll notice is um, you can just build off of your existing Playwright configuration. So, you know, over here, this is the Playwright configuration that everyone uh, you know, knows and loves. This is where you get to say, you know, which reporters you want and, and uh, your trace and so forth and which nothing projects. So here, all right? of that, nothing changes, nothing at all. And so this one, you know, this service configuration file is basically, you know, building off of that and then doing a few more things, right? So there's, um, you know, remember when I said that, you know, you can actually choose now what, which operating system you actually want to have your, you know, your browsers on uh, because mm -hmm. they are running in the cloud and you can choose. Um, there is uh, the environment variable here around, you know, the access token that's uh, being set. Um, and there's a few other things like, um, you know, if you're running, um, uh, let's say on your dev workstation, uh, and you're running your application on localhost, you can have those, mm -hmm. uh, cloud browsers actually just reach back 
and connect oh. to uh, your app working on, on localhost just through the expose network uh, command, which is pretty cool. Very cool. So yeah, just a, a little bit more configuration and you're on your way. And this is all just like copy paste, right? You like, it's all given to you in the doc. That's exactly, exactly, cool. yeah. yeah. Excellent. So th that's all really. Um, and you know, at, at the moment, um, the, the uh the portal here is is you know quite lightweight um if i click over here this is now showing as um uh, as i've run uh, your tests i can actually now start to see some of those test runs um and i'm getting just a little bit of uh, data showing up of you know how long the test took how many workers um how many billable minutes um you know i, I took there's some guides here about just uh um, you know, managing access to your workspace. You can share it with uh, your team members, um, connecting all this up with uh, your CI CD pipeline and so forth. Very cool. Excellent. I think it's pretty clear. I think everyone just needs to give it a try, right? Because it's a public preview, so everyone can try it for free. That's right. That's right. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some links um, uh, because this is really crucial it's at a point where we've got it in public preview we would really love people to try it out um try it against your you know existing tests mm -hmm. um give us your feedback and so you know whether that's on github uh we have a place in uh the playwright discord um channel um if you have some questions there um uh, i'll share out all those links uh, later on and if you could share those Debbie, I'd, I'd appreciate it yeah, we'll put but, in the show you know, there's ways for you to there's, there's ways for the team to hear your feedback um, so that we know, you know what's working, where we need to improve, uh, what features uh, you would like us to add. And people are already starting to have that stream in, which is uh, really, really useful for us. Oh, it's very cool indeed. Um, it, it looks great. And I think if you have a lot of tests, uh, it's going to take away your frustrations. And I think your company is going to save just a lot of time, right? Because those pull requests are just going to happen so much quicker. You got to try it out to really see it, right? Thanks, John. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Debbie. Take care.